Good morning, everyone. This is Rick Murphy with AllNet. And today's webinar topic is going to be the Yamaha Quad Streamer. It's a MusicCast family product, uh, specifically meant for custom installation. It's rack mountable, uh, does uh, four zones of music, and it has eight channels of amplification per chassis. Um, today on the call with us, we've got Robbie, who's the trainer with Yamaha, and Robbie's going to review this product uh, for us. So for everyone who's attending the live webinar today, if you have a if, if you are a CDS certified company and you would like to redeem CEU credits for attending, each session, each live session attended is worth one half CEU point for your um, for the your team member who has a CDS certification. If you have any questions on redeeming the CDS CEU credits, uh, please reach out to myself or reach out to Bill Zydek. Uh, my email is rick.murphy at allnetdistributing.com or Bill Zydek, and the last name is Z-I-D-E-K, bill.zydek at allnetdistributing.com. Uh, we can help you redeem those credits. Also, if there are any members of your staff who are not able to attend the live session today, all of our sessions are recorded and archived on our YouTube channel, which is Allnet Distributing U, the letter U at the end. So uh, look for this session coming soon. And also, um, uh, Robbie did a recent session with us reviewing the the newest generation of Yamaha Avantage home theater receivers that was a, a, a quality session with us. So without any further ado, I'd like to introduce Robbie with Yamaha. And um, uh, we're also, we're gonna have a Q&A at the end with uh, Jim, Jim Laris from Yamaha. So thanks Robbie. Thank you very much, Rick. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, not waste any time here. Let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, I want to just go over a real quick uh, overview of what we're going to talk about today. We're going to do a brief uh, Yamaha brand story. I just want to make sure you guys are up to speed on that. Uh, a MusicCast overview, just in case guys that are new to MusicCast uh, need to you know, be familiar with some of the basic features of it. Uh, some new features, including music casts around, we'll cover that quickly. And then we will jump into third-party control just to get you guys up to speed on that. And uh, I'm going to spend a lot of time on the XDA QS5400 or Quad Streamer. Uh, and there is also a uh, companion piece to that, which is the XDA AMP5400 or just the music cast amp. Uh, this is uh, going to be followed by that Q&A session uh, with, uh, with Jim. And I'll try to answer as many as I, as I can before uh, the, the cutoff on that. So we'll see if we can do that as well. So just to give you guys a basic idea, Yamaha is the, Yamaha, is the world's largest musical instrument manufacturer. Uh, we are 25% of the music instrument market. So 25% of musical instruments sold worldwide every year is a Yamaha, a one in four instruments worldwide. So definitely not a small company here. Uh, we are the world's largest music educator. Seven million students worldwide uh, on a uh, annual basis uh, are taught through the Yamaha Musical Schools. They are open throughout the world in many, many different countries, including lots of them in the US. Uh, we are an industry leader in live sound. Uh, again, very, very uh, high-end, prestigious music halls. Uh, Carnegie Hall was one of our recent ones uh, where we had literally all Yamaha gear put into the system, replacing any existing audio gear throughout the entire hall and the entire venue. So very, very big in the live sound situation as well. Uh, and a leader in innovation. These are Yamaha products. Uh, our Yamaha receivers are developed by engineers that are paid by Yamaha. They are developed in-house. They are not OEM'd out from somebody else. They are built on Yamaha factory lines with Yamaha employees, and most importantly, Yamaha quality assurance at the end of that. Uh, that's a very important thing because our Yamaha products, as you guys are probably well aware of by now, don't really have a uh, high defect rate. There's really no problems with them. Uh, occasionally you'll run into a bad unit just like you will with any product at all ever made but for the most part they are very very reliable very rock solid uh, and very very nice And a lot of that goes back to this innovation yeah this is Yamaha gear uh, and Yamaha engineers are making it so all right so let's jump right into music cast here Yamaha music cast is in its uh, actual fourth generation of product uh, announcements so we've been doing this for four years now and the idea with music cast is to give customers a one-stop shop of uh, being able to listen to their music all throughout their entire house 
And the general idea is that every Yamaha product that we make that has networking built into it, we want it to have MusiCast. So you're going to find it in receivers and soundbars and wireless speakers, uh, the little uh, WXA50 amplifier that's over there on the bottom of that picture. And obviously the newer products like the uh, amplifier, the QS uh, quad streamer amplifier, and uh, all the way down to turntables. We have uh, Yamaha MusiCast enabled turntables. The idea behind it is that you can take whatever product you're listening to in that room and share that content with the rest of the house, whether it's a streaming service like Pandora, Internet Radio, Rhapsody, uh, Napster, uh, Sirius XM, any of the, uh, the common streaming services, uh, all the way over to digital services, analog inputs, and HDMI uh, inputs as well. So if you have a receiver with HDMI uh, watching the football game, you can easily share that with the rest of the house. Everything's in sync. Everything's controlled very easily. Uh, you have the most common music services. All the music cast devices are uh, Spotify Connect. They work with AirPlay as well. Uh, you'll get all the basic ones that you see there. One key uh, music streaming services that you want to be aware of is if you are doing any kind of light commercial. Uh, all music cast devices that have Sirius XM also now support Sirius XM music for business. And that gives you the option of doing, uh, I believe it's $25 a month, and it is a uh, commercially approved streaming service, meaning that all royalties and licenses are paid uh, for that, and it will give your customers a legal option for uh, getting music content into their uh, place of business. So it's very inexpensive comparatively to the fine that you would get if you were just playing regular Pandora uh, or any of these other services that are not commercially licensed. Uh, in that area. But there are plenty of options for the average customer. And it's all controlled through a single nice app, uh, smartphone, tablet, iOS, Android, whatever it is, it will be available for you. You can also utilize control systems with MusicCast. We are a very, very open control system with a open API with uh, as many things as possible built into it. I know a lot of other uh, competing manufacturers say that they have open APIs. One of the nice things that we do is that in our MusicCast API, we pretty much give you full control over the units as you would with uh, a MusicCast app meaning that everything you can do in the regular MusicCast functions, be it browse, search, uh, scroll through, find favorites, anything like that, uh, two-way metadata, uh, feedback, cover art, this is all going to happen through the uh, control system as well. So you'll find voice control through Alexa. We're working on other options as well. Uh, control for all of our MusicCast devices are certified through there. RTI has a fantastic MusicCast driver available. Elon also added uh, MusicCast recently to their system. Uh, and we have others in beta testing as well. We are looking to do URC Total Control 2.0 and be certified by that by, uh, we're hoping by uh, December. We're going to try to submit that next month for certification and hopefully it'll go uh, pretty smoothly. We also have a Crestron driver in beta as well. So with MusicCast, again, we've been doing this for four generations, so I just want to make sure you guys are aware of this. There is a ton of AV receivers that you're putting in already that have MusicCast built into it. Uh, it's the same features and functionalities for the most part with any of these models. Uh, all the ones in blue are just the new models that came out, including the CXA5200, uh, which was just uh, just started shipping a few weeks ago. We do have MusicCast speakers, including the MusicCast 50 and 20. We also have the older models, the, the MusicCast uh, WX010 and 030 speakers. Those are not uh, MusicCast surround capable, but they, uh, they're still a wireless speaker that's available. We do make uh, plenty of sound bars, including the MusicCast Bar 400 there uh, at the top of that uh, picture, and uh, the MusicCast uh, YSP5600, which has Dolby Atmos and DTSX as well. Uh, and then the YSP2700 is MusicCast as well. Uh, plenty of hi-fi gear, MusicCast stereo receivers, uh, MusicCast uh, powered monitor speakers, the NXN 500s, and as well the MusicCast Vinyl 500, that new turntable that just started shipping. Uh, we're just getting the first units in uh, to dealers right now, so you guys are have that available. Uh, and of course, we make the MusicCast amp and preamp, the WXA50, WXC50. Just a word of mention, we had uh, 
designing, uh, you know, scenarios when we were making these and designing what we wanted to be. We had very, very high hopes for sales on these guys, uh, for custom installers, for you guys. And the amount of units that we thought we were going to sell, you guys have already blown that well out of the water. You guys have adopted this very quickly, very properly. Uh, it's a great uh, pair of units. They work very, very well. So thank you guys for uh, adopting those units into your installations. Uh, the newest one of the family is the QS5400, the quad streamer. This is, again, a four-zone, uh, eight-channel music cast amplifier. And we'll get into some details here uh, right after this. But right now, this is just kind of an overview of the music cast product. So that is the, uh, the latest in the lineup. Uh, music cast 20, 50, and sub 100. These are the latest ones that do music cast surround. So the idea being that if you were to place the system uh, inside of a 5.1 situation, so you have a receiver with three wired front speakers, you can have a wireless subwoofer, the music cast sub 100, and music cast wireless rears, the music cast 20 uh, and 50 speakers can be used as wireless rears. So here's a picture of uh, that kind of scenario. You don't have to use both sets up setups in here. You can do a wireless sub or wireless rear speakers, or you can do both. Uh, and you can also use this with a Dolby Atmos system, so a 5.1.2. Uh, so you have ceiling speakers inside the, uh, the front system. So it makes it very easy for that as well. Uh, another functionality that I want to talk about is all 2018 products uh, have MusicCast uh, built in. They all have Bluetooth output capability as well. And Bluetooth output was added via firmware on uh, the system in late October. So it just came out just a few weeks ago. The uh, Bluetooth output was redesigned from last year. It now has a digital uh, capability to it as well. So that means if it comes in, the signal comes in via digital, it will also go out via digital uh, as well. So that will allow you to uh, have a reduced delay or lip sync issue when you're dealing with a digital source. Uh, previously, if you were listening to an HDMI source and you had your Bluetooth headphones on, there would be a little bit of an audio, uh, an audio delay, a lip sync issue, where it would not really be as convenient for the customer to sit and watch that. Uh, if they were watching the local news or something where the, there were a lot of talking going on. Uh, in this case, it's been updated. It is a very, very small lip sync. It is hardly noticeable, if at all. Most people can't even detect it. So it works very, very nicely now uh, with your system. So just remember that that Bluetooth output is on all 2018 models, uh, the uh, uh, receivers, soundbars, anything like that. And here's just a picture of the MusicCast 2018 family. Again, the wireless subs, uh, the MusicCast uh, soundbar, MusicCast 20 and 50 speakers, and the MusicCast Vinyl 500. So let's go ahead and jump into the real uh, primary reason for you guys being here, which is the new amplifiers. Uh, there are two different ones. Again, there's a QS or quad streamer. That is the multi-zone streaming amplifier. Again, four zones, eight channels. Uh, and the official model number is the XDA QS5400RK. The RK just means it is rack mountable. And again, it comes with those rack ears. Uh, there's a companion piece that I'm going to talk about as well. It doesn't have to be used with MusicCast. doesn't have to be used with this as well, but uh, with the QS as well, but it can be. They are companion pieces. Uh, this is basically just a dumb amplifier. This is the MusicCast XDA-AMP5400RK. Uh, so the AMP version versus the QS or Quad Streamer version. All right, so here's a good front and back shot of it. The front picture shows with the uh, little front panel faceplate that comes with it. It's a little magnetic faceplate that snaps on, hides it up there, and uh, gives you uh, very, very little information on there on purpose. The Really, the only thing you can do is see that little light on the front that says if anything is powered on in the system right now. If all those lights were off, that light would be red. Or if all the, the, the rooms were powered off, then that light would be red. And there's the back panel picture. Again, we'll show you more of that later on. Uh, inside of a rack, it works very, very nicely. You can see those two uh, XDA QS units uh, mounted inside the rack there with the face plates on. Uh, it blends in very nicely with the rack. It gives your customers very, very little information to mess with. They can barely do anything to the unit on the front panel, which means they have a very low likelihood of screwing something up. So it works very, very nicely inside of a rack. 
And once again, those rack ears are included in the system as well. So when we talk about pricing and the difference between the two, uh, say a XDA QS 5400 versus four of the WXA 50s, the uh, one of the nice things is on here, the, uh, uh, the price includes the rack ears. So there it is showing inside of a rack system, kind of a theater open view. So it is designed from the ground up for, for you guys, for custom installations. Uh, installers. So we wanted it to be a one U system. That was something very, very important for us from the very beginning was to have it in a one U uh, chassis. And it goes into the back. You'll be able to see all of the uh, connections and ports in there. Again, a very, very open uh, option. We wanted you guys to have as much, as much flexibility with this system as possible. So we tried to build in as many jacks and connectors as we possibly could inside of that one new chassis. Uh, you're going to find there on the bottom is uh, Ethernet in and out. It uh, doesn't matter which one you use. One can be daisy chained to the next system, saves uh, space on your uh, network switch. It does have IR control if you wanted to do that as well. We do have a full set of IR codes for these guys. Uh, there is a cut in, we'll talk about that later, or ducker input. If you're in the commercial uh, industry, you're familiar with the ducker. Uh, aux input does have one, including an output. And then uh, has pre-outs for all four zones there. Uh, along the top in the middle, you're going to find the chime input. Again, we'll cover that in a little bit, followed by the 12-volt triggers. And then you have the uh, Phoenix or Euroblock connectors uh, with the ability to bridge the channels together if you wanted to do that. Uh, followed by a single uh, power strip, power connector. On the front panel, there's just very, very little. This is, again, with the cover off. Uh, you'll be able to turn on and off the units. You'll be able to see the lights on it. Uh, you'll also be able to hit the connect button when you're connecting them uh, with the MusiCast app that one time. And then, of course, you have a USB. This is really for firmware uh, updates. If you had to do one, if for some reason the networking failed, you'd be able to get to the firmware uh, and do a recovery, although that's not very common. Uh, but you'll also find that you can play music through those as well. So if you can do that. And then here's that back panel that I was talking about with everything properly labeled. You can see what it is that's coming out. And we're going to kind of zoom into each one of those because that's really where the magic happens. One thing to note is that MusiCast devices can be stacked up to 32 rooms, uh, meaning that you can have a mixture of sound bars, wireless speakers, uh, XDA amplifiers in any combination that you want. Uh, you can have uh, five of these XDA amplifiers together. Uh, you can have uh, you know a bunch of speakers and sound bars and, and stuff in various rooms. You can have WXA50s, any combination, so up to 32 rooms total in the system. Uh, with that, they can have up to 20 uh, rooms can be linked at the same time to be playing the same content. And then uh, 10, 12 more can be linked together to do something else, but up to 20 can be done uh, at the same time. And just remember that it has dual uh, LAN ports, uh, dual Ethernet connections on the back, so you can daisy chain and loop in and out of uh, the next devices. One nice uh, thing to be uh, noting on here is that even though this is a very, very small unit, it was a lot of uh, a lot of effort was put into it to make sure that these things sounded and performed amazing. These are Yamaha products. They they should expect nothing less than fantastic sound with them. So when you start looking at the capabilities of these, uh, you know, 50 watts if you just use, uh, you know, 8 ohm speakers and go up to 100 watts if you're using 4 ohms, and you can even and bridge the couple of the channels together to get more power from there. Uh, nice stacks inside of them. And uh, again, pretty much everything inside of the unit uh, is designed from the ground up to be really good sound quality. So you'll find Yamaha technologies that help out with that. Uh, compressed music enhancer, bass extension, and volume adaptive equalizer. Uh, things that you'll find on an AV receiver are also trickled down to this kind of a product as well. The Phoenix connectors on there, you'll see in that picture there. Uh, one of the nice parts about this is that the QS and the uh, XDA amp also have uh, integrated circuits that are designed to avoid a ground loop hum. So if you ever notice the, that connection that you get when you plug in the HDMI from a cable box, it doesn't have a proper ground and you get that ground hum. Anything like that going into a system 
when you're inside of Iraq, it is much more uh, relevant. It becomes much more uh, of an issue because everything is in such a tight area. So if one thing has a ground loop, it can easily spread to the rest of the system. And again, there's circuitry inside of the XDA products that prevent the ground loop. Okay, so what we have is a lot of different ways of using the product. Uh, let's start first by noting that it's a MusiCast product, so I can link rooms with anything else. So if I have a receiver in one room, I can link uh, content from there over to the XDA uh, QS. I can also link it from a soundbar or a wireless speaker or anything else going in any, any of the other rooms. Another option you have is uh, obviously the built-in services as well, Pandora, Internet Radio, anything like that. Uh, you know, you also have the aux input, which again does have a loop out or throughout, allowing you to daisy chain that aux input to the next XDA QS if you'd like to do that. Uh, it also has something called a cut-in, and this is uh, something interesting and newer for the home audio side, but uh, consumer commercial uh, audio has been using these kind of inputs for a little while now. So this is either called a cut-in or sometimes called a ducker input as well. And the idea behind the cut-in input is that in a commercial environment, you could have an intercom or a paging system connected into the system, or uh, in this case, you can even have a regular analog input, CD player, network tuner, anything else that you want to plug in. And when you turn on that device or when, if it's an intercom system, when you hit the button and call out, uh, you know, what you want to do, it will actually override or cut in what is going on in the main room. So if you're playing, for example, Pandora in uh, one of those rooms, and you hit the intercom button, it will uh, override Pandora, play the intercom, and then when you release it, it will uh, go back to going to Pandora. And you have a couple different options here. We'll kind of discuss those later on in the settings pages, but you can either completely cut out what you were listening to previously, or you can duck down. That's why it's sometimes called a ducker. It'll duck down the existing Pandora input so you can still hear it faintly, uh, but you're primary, uh, list, primarily listening to the intercom system. So again, two options there. You can completely cut it off or you can just duck it down a little bit and then still hear it when, uh, when it's done. You can also choose how long to cut the audio source for. So for example, if I was playing a CD changer like the picture that's showing there and I was switching between discs, there's a few seconds of a delay where you're going to get some dead air you don't want the uh, audio source to jump back to Pandora because you're trying to play a CD. So you can actually set it for up to five minutes of a delay in between the uh, uh, blank spots. So if it stops doing anything, it'll wait five minutes or up to five minutes before cutting back to the original source. So this is a nice audio sensing input that can be used for a lot of different things. Let's talk about a little, little feature up here that again is uh, more useful inside of the commercial platform, but can also be used inside of residential systems, which is the chime or contact closure. So there are four uh, standard three and a half inch mono mini connectors on the uh, unit, and you have an option for doing four different chimes or doorbell options, if you will. These can be uh, door sensors, you know, doors open and closed, uh, used in a commercial item to, you know, uh, alert the guy in the break room that somebody just walked into the front door, or it can also just be used as a regular doorbell. Uh, and it's just a basic contact closure, so anything, uh, any kind of switch will trigger those. And what it does is it plays one of 20 different preset chimes that can come through the system. So uh, it doesn't matter if the zones are on or off, they will turn on if they're not already, play the chime, and then turn back off. Uh, so you're not going to miss the chime. And they're also completely customizable where the number of zones. So if you only wanted the chimes to uh, interrupt the, you know, the number one, number two, and number three, but not number four, room four, you don't have to do that. You can, uh, you can customize it to only turn on uh, the, the first three zones or the, you know, zone one, zone two, and zone three, uh, or zone two, zone, and zone four. It's completely customizable inside of the menu systems. 
So again, there's a picture of that uh, installation there on the left-hand side showing that you can have the rack uh, mounted with the faceplate without the faceplate. Uh, obviously, it comes with it and the rack ears as well, so you're, you're good to go. Uh, it is very custom friendly. Again, this was designed from the ground up to be a CI product, so it is intended to uh, give you guys the easiest installations possible. Part of that is the Euroblock or Phoenix uh, speaker connectors. It does have plenty of 12 volt triggers. It also does have IR in case you wanted to go that route. And it has a very nice uh, web setup that you can get to very, very easily inside the system. So let's talk about that web setup just a little bit more here. Uh, first of all, you just uh, enter in the IP address in the system slash setup, and you will get to the uh, screen that you're looking at right here. Uh, you can see all four, whether, whether or not they're on right now, what input they're on, what volume they're on, anything like that, uh, obviously from that home screen. Uh, you'll also be able to see the IP addresses. Now remember that there are four different streams of audio inside of each XDA QS, uh, inside of each of the quad streamers. So that means that they're actually going to have four different IP addresses on the network, even though there's only one physical Ethernet connection there. So that's important to note. So you can set uh, static IP addresses for each of them, including the uh, gateway. You can set the DNS servers to be different or the same. And this is the screen that you would do that on. Uh, going into the basic tab up there on the top, you'll see on the left uh, that you can select, again, different outputs. You can say uh, bridge settings. You can bridge number one and number two together, uh, bridge number three, number four, if you wanted to, to combine uh, the amplifiers. Uh, you can also do the, the volume trim in this case here, uh, not only per channel, but per zone, or sorry, per input as well. Uh, you can set them to an auto power standby, on or off. Uh, you can also see those different chime functions. Uh, you can, again, turn on and off the chimes for each zone independently. Uh, you can customize the chime sounds per, uh, per uh, chime, you know, chime one, chime two, three, or four. And again, this is where you do the cut in or ducker input as well, uh, that audio sensing input, which is a really, really nice addition to this unit. And you're also going to find uh, the ability to do equalizer settings. Uh, again, this is per, uh, per zone, per room, so you can easily do that there. And uh, again, you can set the, you know, things like autoplay. And this just means that when the unit was uh, playing Pandora, if it's turned off, the next time it is turned on, it would try to autoplay or resume what it was doing in Pandora. Uh, you can turn that on and off for each of the inputs as well. Okay, so let's just do a brief recap of uh, the QS uh, 5400 and compare it to the A4 of the WXA50s. So if you look at four WXA50s, it kind of does the same thing. There are four powered zones uh, that operate independently with their own independent streams. Uh, but what's the difference? So if you're looking at it uh, price-wise, there is a little bit higher cost inside of the XDA QS5400. And we talked about the reasoning behind that earlier. Uh, but it is a higher cost. But you're going to find here is an ease of installation is going to be much, much greater. So it's one U high uh, with rack ears included versus two U high at least, uh, probably a three U high setup once you put it onto the rack shelf with the faceplate that you had to buy separately. So you had to buy the rack shelf, you have to buy the faceplate, and it's still going to be a much higher setup inside the rack, taking up precious space. Uh, you're going to find you only need a, a single Ethernet connection to go into the system for all four of the rooms inside the QS versus the uh, WXA50s. You're going to need four different ports on your switch dedicated to just that system. Um, it doesn't have any kind of pass-through that goes on to the next device. Uh, very, very similar in the uh, you know, inputs. You are going to find more uh, analog inputs on the WXA50s. Uh, oh, and by the way, you are not going to get any kind of uh, wireless technology inside the QS5400. Uh, it is not intended to be a same room system. It's meant to be inside of a rack, which means you're going to have a hardwired connection built into the rack already. And it means it's not going to have Wi-Fi. There's no need for it. Uh, and because it doesn't have Wi-Fi, uh, Bluetooth is built into that same board. And there's no need for Bluetooth as well because Bluetooth is a same room technology. Uh, it goes up to about 30 to 40 feet. 
and it's uh, it's probably going to be placed a lot further away inside of the rack when you're doing that. So the Bluetooth is not really going to be an option. So there's no Bluetooth inside this unit as well. Uh, but inputs and outputs, you'll see a little bit of a difference there. Uh, power, very, very similar. Uh, difference is negligible, but what you can do is uh, bridge the XDA QS. So if you wanted more power out of those units, you could do that. Uh, much easier to install your block connectors on the XDA. And uh, again, when you're talking about MusicCast, it's all the same technology. So up to 32 zones, and you can link groups uh, either up to 20 uh, when you're using a 2018 MusicCast product as the master, or if you're using a WXA or WXC50 uh, older models, you can go up to 10 uh, when they are the master. So that kind of sums up the uh, XDA QS Quad Stream 5400 uh, unit itself. So again, a lot of value built into it, a lot of features, convenience, uh, but don't forget that there is also a uh, kind of an accessory or optional uh, amplifier. This is just a dumb amp. This is the XDA AMP 5400. Uh, similar power rating, similar number of channels, similar number of zones total, but it's just a basic amplifier that can be used as a companion product to the QS or with uh, other devices as well. So if you wanted to, remember that the uh, XDA QS has pre-outs for all four zones. So you can expand the zones to more speakers if you wanted to do that. Uh, and you can go out of there into any other existing amplifier that you have in the system, multi-channel amplifier, or you could do into the XDA AMP. Uh, into there, you can do trigger outs of the QS, go to the trigger in on the 5400 uh, amp version. And again, you'll see the speaker terminals are very, very similar in design as well. Now, the nice part about this system is that it can be four independent zones if you wanted to. You can also bridge them together to uh, have more power, or you can also use the included jumpers uh, and uh, trigger uh, connectors that come with the unit. And when you jump them, you'll see a couple examples there on the left-hand side. It allows you to select uh, one source to be in all four zones or just a mixture of four zones. Uh, I can combine just a couple of the zones together if I wanted to or up to all four of the zones using those jumpers that are included in the box. Uh, another example you're going to find here of using the uh, XDA amps. Uh, so you can actually use the, just one single QS and then use multiple uh, XDA amps in, in addition. So if you have a very large outdoor space or very large entryway in the house, you can actually pair those together with the uh, XDA QS and get more uh, zones that are all controlled with the same system. So again, this is just some of the options that you can do with the system itself. Uh, here's just a general recap of it. The XDA QS 5400 uh, retail price is $2699, $2700, and it will be uh, shipping in December. Uh, same thing with the XDA AMP, the XDA AMP 5400RK. Uh, again, another multi-room amplifier, $1699. Uh, so $1,700, and it is also available in December. They're going to be shipping about the same time. So just to kind of give a recap here, and then we'll start our Q&A session. Uh, the XDA uh, systems were kind of our primary focus, but we did want to cover the brand story, uh, Yamaha being one in four music instruments sold worldwide. Uh, the MusicCast overview, kind of give you guys an idea of what MusicCast was in case you uh, weren't up to speed on that. We talked about some of the features that you can use in MusicCast, like the new MusicCast Surround, which is uh, using wireless rear speakers uh, and using the MusicCast 20s as those rear speakers. Uh, they uh, talked about third-party control, again, RTI, Control 4, Elon are all out and ready to go. And we have more like URC Total Control that are in the pipeline and just about ready to be certified. So then we moved on to the QS or Quad Streamer and talked about it, uh, talked about the XDA AMP or AMP 5400. And then we kind of wrapped up as where we're at now. So what I'd like to do is uh, start the Q&A session now. So uh, Rick, I don't know if uh, you've been receiving questions on that and we can kind of uh, talk about that. I have a few minutes before I'm gonna run off to my uh, next appointment, but uh, I can uh, definitely sit around and uh, chat from here. Okay, yeah, we definitely have some questions 
um, that came into the chat box. And by the way, I don't know that I mentioned it at the beginning of the session, but if anybody has any uh, questions that you'd like to pose, there's a uh, questions tab on the right side of your screen. You should have the, uh, the, the full uh, pane of controls. So please type in to the chat, and, or I'm sorry, to the questions tab, and I'll uh, go ahead and uh, pose the questions to Robbie and or Jim. So the first question comes from Jim. He's asking about uh, BMI and ASCAP. If a, if a business, a commercial business, is already paying the license, then you can use any content you'd like, correct? So it just depends on where the content is coming from. So if it was coming from regular Pandora, there's no way to pay the you know the proper licensing fees on that. It would have to come through, uh, for example, the uh, streaming device. Say you had the Pandora uh, certified streaming device that you know was for commercial use. If that was going into the XDA products, then and then being distributed, then you're perfectly fine. Uh, but if you're trying to use any of the built-in sources on the XDA or any of the MusicCast products, you would want to use the Music for Business because it's the only one that's actually got the licensing behind it. Okay, perfect. Okay, the next question that came up is in regard to uh, when is the appropriate time to use a second QS versus using the uh, the Zone Extender Amplifier. So. Uh, can you go back a couple slides? It looks like on the zone extender amplifier, there is not a network connection, which means uh, that it can only play the analog inputs that are physically con connected to it, correct? Correct, yeah. So it depends okay. on when you want more streaming sources. So if I have a situation, uh, you know, and I can go back to that slide as well, but if I have a situation where I would like to have four streams of music, and that's it, but I wanted to have it in more than four rooms, then that's where the companion amplifier would uh, would be helpful. So uh, like Rick mentioned, this uh, the amp version does not have a network port. It does not do any streaming services. It is only going to do whatever comes in, comes out. So if I jump back over to this slide right here in this situation, uh, you'll see that I could use an XDA QS in tandem with a couple uh, one or more of the amps, and the amps just spread out the sound to additional rooms. So again, if I wanted to be limited to only four streams of music, but I wanted them in more than four different rooms, that's where I could expand it with the amp. But the outputs of the QS can mimic whatever's in that first room, so it doesn't necessarily Correct. output a, str a specific stream, it outputs a specific zone output. It's whatever, yeah. If we go back to here and I connect it to... That's the exact uh, one I wanted you to show again. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, if I go back to this one, it shows uh, the zone out of zone number one going into amp number one. So that's just an extension of that first room. Uh, again, it doesn't allow a secondary stream out of that uh, room. It just, in, it, you know, basically allows it to split to more than uh, one, you know, set of speakers. Okay. And then is there a way to turn these on and off within the MusicCast app and then also within the integration through the third-party partners like RTI, Elan, Crestron, et cetera? Yeah, so you're going to find uh, you could do IR control if you really wanted to on there and, and control the, uh, the AMP version separately. Otherwise, it's really going to be controlled by the trigger outputs. Uh, meaning okay. that you know when you when you turn on zone one of the uh, QS, it would also turn on you know uh, amp number one of the amp uh, if that's where you had it installed to. Uh, one thing I didn't mention here is that in the middle of the amp version, if you look at those little dip switches there, those little white ones, you're going to find that you can actually set it up to be audio sensing as well, very similar to the cut in input on the QS meaning that if I set those dip switches, it would actually just be listening for audio. So whenever anything came out of the pre-outs of the QS, it would turn on the amp. Uh, so that's another way you could do those as well. Perfect, okay. All right, so then the next question I think comes up. Um, it sounds like that for common installations, you'd use stacks of QSs more often than you'd use QSs with external amplifiers. Correct. If you're looking for individual streams for each room of the house and just one set of speakers, it would be beneficial just to use stacks of QSs versus uh, you know, any kind of additional uh, the amps. Okay. And then for systems where there's already, let's say, uh, uh, one of the higher model of Aventage receivers in play, um, do you recommend setting the QS up as a, a totally standalone piece, or do you recommend using the uh, Zone 2 outputs or the multi-zone outputs of the Aventage. 
I would leave them as a completely separate room and that way you're not interfering with anything. Because if you wanted to share uh, sources, let's say you wanted to share uh, something coming in from uh, the receiver, you could do that using MusiCast and just Robbie, we lost you. Okay, now I hear you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's weird. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, so basically what we want to do again is just, uh, you know, we'll, we'll set up the main zone of the receiver and zone two of the receiver to be completely separate from the QS. So again, if you wanted to share something with the receiver to the rest of the house, you can link it within MusiCast as opposed to uh, going to the uh, uh, audio out of the zone two of the receiver into the main or into the QS. So you wouldn't have to do it that way. Does that make sense? It does make sense perfectly. Okay. okay. And then your your maximum that you mentioned early on in the presentation of 32, mm -hmm. uh, does that include the MusicCast uh, standalone table radios and the MusicCast devices like soundbars and the receivers? Or is that 32 yes. inside so of 32, the QS platform? No, nope, 32, any MusicCast device in the past four years. Uh, we've done firmware upgrades on them to allow up to 32 total rooms. Uh, the only difference is, is that if it's an older model, you can, and you're using it as the master, you can only link up to 10 total rooms. Uh, but if a 2018 or newer product is used as the master room, like say it's a QS or one of the new receivers or anything like that, uh, you can link up to 20 rooms if it is the master. Well, I think that certainly fills the majority of the uh, applications out there. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Now, can we go back to the uh, the slide where we were talking about the, I saw this was just released on a firmware update maybe four or five weeks ago, uh, using MusicCast radios, uh, table radios as surrounds, kind of like there's a another brand that starts with an S, mm -hmm. uh, where you can do that. And now we've got that capability within the Yamaha Avantage line. Here we go. Yep. Yeah, MusicCast uh, is surround. Yeah. And actually, it's not just with Avantage. Any uh, 2018 MusiCast receiver uh, can do wireless rear speakers. And any of our 2018 soundbars, so like the MusiCast Bar 400, can use those as well. Uh, so that's really the defining factors. If it's a 2018 receiver or soundbar or newer, obviously, the, the later ones will come out with those features as well. Then you will get MusiCast surround. And actually, I believe we're the only AV receiver that can do wireless rear speakers. Uh, you can do some on sound bars with other brands, but I, I believe there's really uh, no other options for AV receivers to do wireless rears. Yeah, that's that's really nice. So we can also do up to two of these uh, sub 100s. Uh, only one if one of them in each room. So yeah, just oh, uh, so the 5.1.2 means you. Yeah, can that's do when you're using Atmos. Yeah, so if you're using nice. height channels, you could do that as well. Oh, I'm okay. So it's a single sub and uh, up to two sets of, or one uh, set of surrounds, one set of heights. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you would use the regular in ceilings as your height speakers. Uh, you know, you wouldn't you wouldn't be using wireless uh, Atmos speakers. Uh, sure. The only thing you could use these for is the surrounds. Okay, so in that case, you would use like a WXA, one of the. Uh, the MusicCast amplifiers to drive a pair of speakers? Uh, no, no, no. The receiver would be powering it. So if oh, it was an, okay. yeah, say an RXA, RXV 685, you know, it has uh, the channels built in for the for the heights. Sure. Okay. We do have another question that came in. Okay. Let me see how I can do this here. I think I've got time of... for one more, and then I'll pass it over to Jim. Okay. We'll ask Jim the meatball questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jim's... A great resource to us. I don't mean to. <laughs> solve That's that. all right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So if the amp is used for widely separated outdoor speakers and the feed is coming from a zone that's smaller, but the user wants them to be part of the same zone, is there a way to maintain stereo in the smaller zone while using that mono option for the outdoor speakers? Or is it best to use a summing device uh, before the external amplifier? 
Well, I, I guess it depends on what's powering all of those speakers. Uh, maybe I didn't understand that in the question. So, I mean, if it's uh, if you're using, like, say, the XDA Q, QS and then out to an amplifier for another couple of pairs, uh, and then you're running the long run of, of speaker wire out to those uh, distant channels, then I think that would be fine. Everything would be in sync still because uh, they're all using the same length of speaker wire or similar lengths of speaker wire. Uh, if you were using another device to, to uh, power, you know, say two or three or four sets of speakers in addition to that, then it might be a little bit different. I, I'd be, it'd be tough to say. I, I, I guess I, I need to think more of what was, uh, yeah, what was actually used in the system. Okay. Well, I know that the dealer is asking this question. He's a pretty sophisticated guy. He likes to do uh, high-end, unusual stuff. And he probably saw, he probably raised an eyebrow at the same time I did when I saw the monaural down mix option on the WebOS. Mm -hmm. And yep. I love that option, but I think, I think what he's asking is if you're, if you want to maintain stereo in like the more intimate setting in the home, but yet you want to use that monaural down mix for the outside, can you do those things independently or do you have to have separate zones? Like um, one, one in stereo and then one in monaural down mix. Well, yeah, so the stereo and mono down mix is one for each room. So if, if zone two of the you know QS was uh, doing a mono down mix, it's completely separate from the uh, uh, left and right pre outs or left and right outputs of the uh, zone one. You know what I mean? So oh, those okay. are separate. You know, each each zone has a mono option by itself. Okay. So, so I, Jim, I it think. sounds like yeah, you'd want to use like um, RDL Labs and other little you know gizmo box manufacturers make these little mono down mix so we might put one of yeah. those in line exactly it might yeah. make it easier for him in that specific case okay perfect all right well if anyone else has any additional questions i think we're robbie we're right on time we, we yeah. <laughs> worked right, right within your schedule good. so all right everyone i want to thank you for taking the time to join the session today I'm going to go ahead and leave the session live because uh, there was a little bit of a mix-up on the, the registration. So we might get an influx of people logging in. Um, I'm going to – no, I don't think I am going to leave it live because I think you're going to go ahead and sign off. So – I yeah, won't I have anything to put up. It'll, uh, so. it'll mess. With, it may mess with you. So, but I do appreciate okay. everybody coming in uh, and attending this. So, thank you very much. You guys can always watch the uh, recorded version as well if you need to for later. Yeah, we'll have the recorded version posted short yeah. shortly. <laughs> <laughs> and again, I apologize for the the mix up in the registration link. Uh, if anyone just joined this thinking that uh, it was going to start um, at uh, eleven o'clock central and run to noon uh we started it at 10 central and ran it to 11 like we always do um let us know let me know my name is rick murphy and this uh rick.murphy at allnetdistributing.com i'll be happy to send you a copy of the archive link or just look in your email we'll uh, send out a copy of the archive links um for the month of november in about two weeks so robbie and jim thank you very much for your time today and everyone on the call thank you again for joining us if if you have any questions about um or if you have any suggestions for webinar topics, please feel free to reach out to me. We're uh, starting to build our calendar for 2019. And we always enjoy hearing the input from everyone who uh, participates in the program. So yeah. thanks, thanks, thanks everyone and have a great day.